What's up everybody, welcome back or to the channel. So today we're gonna to be working on replacing the radio head unit and speakers on my 2010 Bentley 240 Cruise pontoon boat. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's get this going. Okay, so if we come over here, you'll see this is the old original head unit that came with this boat back in 2010. So again, this is well over 13 years old and it does still work, but I think some of the wiring is getting old and it's not sending a good signal to the speakers. I think only one speaker is working right now. And I'm sure if I just went ahead and replaced all of the wiring, everything would work, but there's already a little crack in it. And this is an old school system with a CD player in it, which no one really carries CDs anymore. So it's just time to upgrade this. And what we're gonna be replacing this with today is a new setup that I picked up online. This is the Pile 300 watt Marine stereo here. This is a Bluetooth streaming head unit. So it does have the radio capability and Bluetooth capability. So again, really nice backlit display, very nice head unit for a very reasonable cost. So I got that. And then to pair with them, I have the Pile 200 watt peak power speakers. These are the six and a half inch two-way marine speakers that I'll be replacing these bottom speakers here. So each one of these comes with two speakers. That's why I have two kits. And then I have some marine grade 14 gauge wire here that I'll be using to wire up all of the speakers. So if you're interested in any of those products there, I'll put links in the description of this video that you can go check them out for yourself. But first I need to start taking all of this stuff out. So on this particular unit, we're going to open it up. I already took the four bolts out. We're going to rip the unit out, cut all the wires. So let me get this started and we'll be back with an update. Okay, so we went ahead and we got the original factory head unit taken out and we did get the original speakers taken out. So we got all of that ripped out of the dash. We have it ripped out of all of the seats. So we're all good to go at this point to start opening up our box of the new head unit and seeing what we have to do to get it wired up to the existing harness. And then after inspecting the wires, the wires actually all look in pretty good shape. Okay. So the existing wires still look really good. So I might not even have to replace any of the wiring. I may have to just replace the fittings because once those fittings get corroded, they don't really make a good contact anymore. So I might just have to replace the fittings, but let me dive a little deeper into this and we'll find out what we have to do and what wires we may or may not have to replace. So let me jump into this a little further and we'll be right back with an update. Okay, so after I just opened up the box, this is what you're going to have in the box. You're going to have your head unit right here. Okay, very lightweight. But again, I guess because it's just a radio and Bluetooth receiver, it's going to be lighter than, say, something that has a CD player built into it. So this is what the unit looks like here. You have all of your jacks on the back. And then you get your packet here with your installation guide, a couple wire harnesses, some keys to install it, some bolts and a remote. Now, one of the things that I did is I ripped apart the old radio and I took out the original wire harness because this plug here plugs into the factory wire harness right there. So I figured to make this a lot easier on myself, I just went ahead, ripped open the back cage of this and cut out the wires. So I have a full wire harness and all of these wires here actually lines up to the Kellers that are lined up for this head unit. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and splice those harness tails there into the Kellers of these harness tails here. And then I should be able to just plug this right back in and everything should work. So let me start doing that and we'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I got all of the wires spliced in together, keeping all of the speaker wires color coded correctly. And I got the other wires over here spliced in and shrink wrapped and soldered as well. So now the original harness that connects underneath the dash is hooked up to the harness that's going to go to the radio. So let me go ahead and get this installed up at the dash and let's start playing around with the speakers. Okay, so we are finally done. I got my head unit hooked up back in the dash and I did add on this cover here. You hit a button on the front and the cover lifts up. It has a nice gasket seal around the back. It covered my whole area very well. These little side caps pop off and you can put two bolts in on either side to hold it in place. And then you can shut it. Gives your radio head unit a nice water resistant seal. It just protects it a little bit further, which is what I like. So I have that hooked up there. The unit itself, really nice. It has a few different modes from Bluetooth, 
and radio and different things like that. You could change some of your treble and bass and fade and things like that. You have an IR blaster here, so you can use your remote, which is really handy. It has an SD card slot, so if you wanna load up some music on an SD card, you can slap it in there and have music on the go. It has a USB port if you wanna connect your phone that way or charge it. Has an auxiliary port here, preset stations. So overall, really nice radio. I did get the Pile six and a half inch speakers installed, which was very simple and easy. They filled the exact same hole that was there before. All of the screw mounts lined up perfectly, so I didn't even have to drill any new holes. As far as the wiring, all of the factory wiring was still perfectly fine. What I did was I added these one foot long extension tails on there by soldering them in and then i ended up doing some shrink wrap there and then i added new fittings up here that connected right to the bottom of the speaker there so overall that turned out really good there as you can see the same thing okay so i have the same thing here have the extension right here just because when you start throwing some gear in your in this compartment sometimes your gear might pull on those wires a little bit and i wanted a little excess wire so that it's not gonna pull out from the speaker. So that's that speaker there. We have the front speaker up here. Same thing, got my extensions on, hooked up. Everything's good to go there. Same thing on this one over here. So down in here, same thing. Extension wires tapped in, everything's good to go. So now all four speakers are hooked up. They look real nice. Now we can go over here. Turn our radio on. Let's see, we're gonna turn it up a little bit. I'm just gonna play a song on my phone. Nice bass response. Sounds really good. Now this is just a garage band song that I made up for my YouTube intro videos. Now, if I would be playing a different song, like an actual song on Spotify or on my music app, it would sound even better and even louder but I don't wanna play any specific songs because YouTube ends up flagging my videos for copyright infringement. But overall, sounds really good. And what's nice is I can control the fade from the front to the back and I can fade it from left to right. But right now, I think I have it faded to one towards the front. So because when you're sitting back here in the driver's seat, you hear a lot more of a sound up here. So I put it a little bit more up in the front where most people are probably gonna be hanging out. But very simple and easy to use. But overall, it sounds awesome. It looks awesome and I'm really happy with it. But being that this is Bluetooth, I was just playing it from my phone, Bluetooth connected to here. Very simple and easy to hook up. Again, a lot of great settings, very simple and easy to use. Again, you have your mode button here, which turns it on, but you could keep tapping through and hit radio, auxiliary in, Bluetooth, okay? And then down here, you got different bands for like AM and FM and things like that. You have your clock buttons here. You have these buttons here to adjust through your radio stations, all your preset stations here. So again, very simple and easy to use. And honestly, it sounds awesome and I'm really happy with it. So again, overall installation was very simple and easy. I didn't have to replace all of the wiring. All of the standard wiring that was in the wire loom already was perfectly fine. All I did was extend it about a foot at each speaker so that I had a little bit more wiggle room in there so that if I threw any gear inside the compartment, it wouldn't pull the wires from the speaker. So everything was very easy to hook up. I think everything turned out great and it looks awesome and I'm really happy with it. So we went ahead and ripped the factory head unit and factory speakers out, disconnected everything. Then I went back in and installed the new pile Bluetooth head unit into the dash. And then I hooked up the new pile six and a half inch speakers into each compartment where they were previously. I did not have to replace all of the wiring, but I did add 12 inch extensions so that I had a little bit more wiggle room under the compartment so that if I threw gear inside, it wouldn't pull so tight on the wires and unplug the speaker wire from the speakers. So we went ahead and did all of that. Everything's hooked up, everything's wire loomed. I do recommend if you can, cutting off the existing harness from your factory radio and trying to reuse that because it just makes hooking everything up that much easier. But everything went good and I'm really happy with it. So my overall impressions of the Pile Bluetooth radio head unit, definitely give it a thumbs up and give it a go. My overall impressions of the Pile six and a half inch marine speakers, 
definitely give them a go as well. They sound awesome. They're very easy to install. They're high quality, and I'm really happy with this purchase. So that's it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and like this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you, I truly appreciate you all. And as always, see you in the next video.